Building the Wolverine Amplifier Initial Sine Wave Testing In this video, where we left off Basic 8 ohm sine wave tests 4 ohm power test 2 ohm power test And winner of the PCBs will be announced In the last video we finished around this point And it was time to test out the amplifier properly over the next few slides, I'll show some basic sine wave measurements using 8 ohm, 4 ohm and 2 ohm resistive loads. I plan to do some more measurements with a more reactive load, but at this stage, my intention is to show the basic operation of the amplifier at some different power levels and frequencies. Here is a test load I used comprising of non-inductive power resistors. In this picture, it is configured as an 8 ohm load. In this next series of slides, I'm going to show you my oscilloscope screen. The yellow trace is the input signal, and the blue trace is the amplifier output. The first group of measurements are all using an 8 ohm resistive load. In this slide, the input from the signal generator is a 940 millivolt peak to peak sine wave at 1 kilohertz which is the yellow trace and the output from the amplifier is a 25.4 volts peak to peak sine wave at 1 kilohertz which is the blue trace this equates to approximately 8.81 volts RMS as you can see on the scope capture above you can see the measurements circled in red at the bottom of the screen to calculate the RMS power across the resistive load you can use V squared divided by R. For example, 8.81 volts RMS squared divided by 8 ohms equals 9.7 watts RMS into 8 ohms. Here is 5 kilohertz at just under 10 watts. Here is 10 kilohertz at just under 10 watts. Here is 20 kilohertz at just under 10 watts. Here is 50 kilohertz at just under 10 watts. I would not recommend to test at this frequency at high power since it will heat up the Zobel network resistor on the output. Here is 100 kilohertz at just under 10 watts. Here is 1 kilohertz at just under 50 watts. Here is 5 kilohertz at about 50 watts. Here is 10 kilohertz at about 50 watts. Here is 20 kilohertz at about 50 watts. Here is 1 kilohertz at almost 100 watts. Here is 5 kilohertz at almost 100 watts. Here is 10 kilohertz at almost 100 watts. Here is 20 kilohertz at a little over 100 watts. Here is 50 kilohertz at almost 100 watts. Once again, don't try this at home unless you're monitoring the Zobel network resistor temperature. Here is 1 kilohertz at close to full power. Here is 5 kilohertz at close to full power. Here is 10 kilohertz at close to full power. Here is 20 kilohertz at close to full power. Here is 50 kilohertz at close to full power. Don't try this at home. So here is 1 kilohertz at the onset of clipping. Clipping is clean and symmetrical. The output power at clipping was over 175 watts RMS into 8 ohms.
the output side wave was visually undistorted up to the onset of clipping and I ran the amplifier for approximately 15 minutes at full power output. At full power output the amplifier was stable and the 5 unit heatsink I was using was warm to the touch but not overly hot. At this point I changed the setup to use a large 1 kVA toroid transformer with dual rectifiers and 162,000 microfarad capacitor per rail for the 4 ohm and 2 ohm testing since my laboratory style power supplies could not supply the power required at loads below 8 ohm. Please note this is a non-regulated linear power supply. I reconfigured the test load I used for 4 ohms and I measured the full output power up to clipping at 1 kHz. Bear in mind the rail voltage on non-regulated power supplies drops down a few volts under heavy loading. At full power with a 4 ohm load the amplifier was stable and the 5 unit heatsink I was using was warm to the touch but not very hot. This was at just under 300 watts RMS output power. I reconfigured the test load I used for 2 ohms. So I measured the full output power up to clipping at 1 kHz. Bear in mind the rail voltage on non-regulated power supplies drops a few volts under heavy loads, especially at 2 ohms. At full power with a 2 ohm load, the amplifier was stable and the 5 unit heatsink I was using warmed up a little. This was at approximately 480 watts RMS output power into the 2 ohm load. Some notes on testing. Use test leads with clips so you don't have to hold the probes whilst taking your measurements. Use reasonably short twisted leads for the power supply leads and the leads to the test load. Use high quality cable for the signal input leads, either coaxial, twisted pair or shielded twisted pair. Try to keep the test leads neat and short and away from sources of mains hum and noise. Ensure you have enough ventilation for your heat sinks, both for the amplifier and the test load. So there are many other topics related to this, but it's a little bit outside the scope of this video. So make sure you ensure adequate heat sinking. So I'm using a 5 unit UMS heatsink and it's ample. It's possibly overkill even for the rail voltage I plan to run, which is between plus or minus 57 volts DC and potentially plus or minus 60 volt DC rails. Time to announce the winner of the PCBs. The winner is Christian. Christian's DIYAudio.com username is CLPK. Christian CLPK, please contact me via DIYAudio.com and I'll organise to post you the set of green boards pictured below. Congratulations! For my next video, I plan to show some of my measurements set up and talk about some planned power supply options. Don't forget to check out the link for the poll for a second group buy for the Wolverine PCBs. I'll leave a link in the description for the poll and please register your interest if you missed out on the first round or if you simply want more Wolverine printed circuit boards. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe and if you enjoyed the video and if you've got any build pictures of your Wolverine build uh, you know progress on how you're going please post them in the forum we'd love to see that uh, also um, any questions you know post them in the forum so you can help anyone else with the same problem and um, yeah look forward to seeing everyone else's Wolverine builds progressing thanks guys see you next time